Hello. We're standing in Northridge right now. Northridge was the scene where the earthquake on January 17th killed at least 16 people in one building and it caused uh, utter devastation. A lot of people were dis displaced from their homes here. And sometimes just being prepared for an earthquake is not enough. A lot of these people had water, they had food, they had everything that, that you would think you would need in an, in an earthquake, and yet they still lost everything. We're looking at what once was a two-story apartment building. There was a gas leak, and five minutes after the quake had started, this apartment complex was engulfed in flames. There was a flame in the center of this building which burned for two days. And as you can see, not only did they lose all their possessions, they were lucky to get out with their lives. And what is left is just something for the scrap heap. And it's hard to believe that amid all this devastation, as bad as this is, with this entire complex of apartments totally destroyed, yet the building next door, the very same design, appears to be totally untouched by the earthquake. And yet if we could see the insides of these buildings, we probably would find out that there's quite a bit of damage there too. What we're looking at now is uh, an apartment building that from uh, about 100 yards away, it looks like it's all right, but when you get up close, you'll notice that the building has actually risen a distance of nine inches. It's now nine inches higher than it used to be. That's the first step now to get into an apartment building. What we're looking at right here, this is another one of the buildings in Northridge that received substantial damage. This is just one of many hundreds of buildings in Northridge where people woke up 4.30 in the morning on January 17th and found out their lives had changed forever. For every one of these apartment buildings, there might be a hundred families. For every family, many people, and for every person, there's a story. What we're looking at now is a three-story building that sustains some damage quake and right next to it is another three-story building that's correct it's a three-story building that uh, housed a lot of people who are no longer are with us there were 16 people died in the building right across the street and as i said everyone who went through this quake has a story to tell but some of the stories will never be told people were were shaken out of their sleep 4 30 in the morning January 17th, and suddenly a building fell on top of it. Well, I don't think we're going to need an earthquake map in order to see the damage that was caused to the Northridge Education Center. A lot of new signs have come up in uh, Los Angeles, like uh, there's one sign on Highway 14 that says get your kicks on Route 6.6, another sign that says welcome to Los Angeles, some assembly required. Tom, let me ask you this, you've lived through several of the earthquakes here in California, Has have you given any thought to maybe moving away to another state? I have to admit I'm a coward and this one really scared me. This is the most frightening experience I've ever had waking up at 4.30 in the morning in the middle of violent shaking. Yes, I'm seriously thinking about leaving Southern California. I've lived here for about uh, 14 years this time and I'm ready to move. Well, one of the things that you've noticed uh, as we've been taping here is that life does go on. Los Angeles did not ever come to a dead stop when this uh, earthquake happened. For the first couple of hours, no telephones. For the first couple of days, no electricity. For the first couple of weeks, there was no water suitable for drinking. Everyone had to boil the drinking water, but life goes on. As you can see, 
rebuilding all around. Uh, everyone is trying their best to do something to get back to normal. As we know, uh, normal will never quite mean the same thing that it, that it once meant, but uh, it's, it's getting there slowly but surely. Uh, we're, we're even having to watch out for traffic as we go along here. Nowhere in Northridge do you find people sitting around on street corners crying their eyes out. You do see people still moving their furniture. I remember when uh, I first came over here a couple days after the quake, some of the people were sitting out on the lawns with all the furniture that they had in the world, all their possessions, looking so lonely, waiting for the U-Haul trucks, the Hertz trucks, the rental trucks to come along and move them. And of course, they, they started putting their lives back together. They got places to live. Somehow, LA is rebounding. I, I may not stick around for the total rebound myself, but, uh, but it, it is doing quite well. The, the city, as David said, it's brought out the best in people, and unfortunately the worst. And, uh, this is just an example of uh, what it takes to live in LA. You gotta be willing to face whatever the new year brings, and every year brings something new.